Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Oh, not over there. Yep, we're here. Whoa. I've got you centered in or not. You're in the middle of that, that'll work right there. I'll stick it over here. No. Yeah. Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, we're going to get things started this morning. The first order of business is going to be installation of our new elected officials for this uh, coming next four year term. So if I could have uh, Barb and Susie come up to the table, please. Let Scott get in here. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Please raise your right hand. I state your name and office. I'm Bar Richmond. Do solemnly swear that I will support. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and that I will faithfully and impartially, to the best of my ability, discharge all the duties of the office of Chair of Jefferson County, Iowa, as now and hereafter required by law. Congratulations, you're all new supervisors and sheriff. Look forward to working with you this. Okay. 
Okay, we'll now move on into the uh, supervisor's office and begin our regular meeting. Uh, yes, it's the 21st today. These will have to go with. Yes, sir. That you can hang on your wall. Yeah. Are you making sure the drills are working? Now I'm just waiting for everything to clear out here so I can go back to show. What's that? Yeah, they got, they all have time to sign them after. Yeah. Hey. Hi, Jim. Uh, no, they haven't brought it in to us yet. But there were some papers that uh, Shannon needed to print. There we go. And the bills. I will need to have you sign these, though, uh, or initial and date. They're the bills coming up uh, that they need to pay. Uh, you you got to do it today. Oh, really? So we still need Lee to sign them? Okay. All right. Every Monday or whenever. We sign these so that people can get paid. And typically we do it right after our meeting. But no, you don't technically start to the first because yeah. I must have a okay. and then like if one of us is out of town or something, um, two of us can sign up, but there's been a time well, early COVID when I did it on yeah. Zoom and I wasn't physically here. She just emailed them to me and I just emailed yeah. back, yeah, that's okay. And then if we have questions, the details down in here. Okay. Well, thank you. So now we're, we're through our swearing in. Um, thank you for joining us for that this morning. Uh, we're going to begin our agenda with uh, acknowledge the minutes from our previous meeting. Second, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, I am going to move up the discussion with the uh, to discuss and consider electronic locking system in the courtroom because I don't want to. I want to be mindful of your time, and I know you've got quite a bit going on. So, um, I did receive an estimate for that. Um, it is going to be fifty-seven hundred dollars and a nickel is what they proposed. Um, this, this is an expense that we need to come up with from our budget because it's, again, it's our building and everything. Sure, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Um, and I know you'd requested to get the uh, building safety committee back together. I would appreciate help on that, getting that taken care of. Meeting for January 5th from Kevin. Um, this is on our agenda. Okay. Um, I do know that they're going to be working with the sheriff's office and I believe just out of that could be used for like a system, but that's something that the committee would have to agree that's on. That's, I've talked to Bart about that as well. Yeah. And I'm hopeful that, I mean, obviously we have a great security system up there and we want it to be maintained and we want it to be working because right. you know, doors won't stay open or shut it depending on the day. Um, but yes, we have a committee meeting on January 5th, so we'll have more information about that. Okay. All right. What, where is that meeting going to be held? We'll have it here, probably in a district courtroom. Okay. I don't know who the supervisor's representative is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, are you available otherwise? I can on the fifth, yeah. I'm, I know one of the things that we're kind of wondering is it seems like we're spending a lot of money on this system. Is it a possibility to consider going back to June? Well, and we also we also need to discuss that we want to try to work into the budget a new project to replace the north door entryway and everything. And we've been talking about using. Mm -hmm 
card keys for entry there you just hold them up to it it unlocks you go in it locks right behind you and well yeah it uses a file doesn't it it's just a swipe card you just put it in front of that there's we have box but it's also a card but it's okay the fob is the same as the card you just swipe them in front of the black box and it opens the doors yeah and i'm i'm wondering how that would tie into what we're proposing for out here I mean, hopefully we'll be able to do that out front here as well um on with us Correct, and that's and that's. The fans are system upstairs. We can set all of those and monitor all that too. Um, it's just that right now it's not working at all because the entire computer is not out of it. Okay, so Tuesday, January fifth. Yeah, I believe we said one o'clock, but I'll double check that afterwards. Okay, just yeah, send me an email with it, would you please? Um, and we would like to have a true discussion of everything that's. Uh, needed for the system because i want to i want to maintain you know what we've got it just seems that you know 10 years you're going to look look at spending another five well 10 years from now maybe even more than what it is now and so um i was hoping that we could talk about systems that may be uh a little bit more stable and uh, be able to be in place quite a little bit longer but we want to get this taken care of and like i said we've got the one bid um it doesn't rise to the level where we would have to put it out for competitive bids we could ask uh particular companies like uh talking to washington county find out what company they've used and get a request for quote from them so that we can um get their their idea of, of what we need to do this and what the expense might be but Either way, it's going to take probably six to eight weeks from now in order to get it completely fixed and underway. Um, and then we'll have to coordinate that with disturbances of what may be going on during court or when that company comes to install all the new equipment for the courtroom, for the TVs and monitors and um, microphone systems and, and all of those types of things. So, yeah. well, I mean, yeah, we can get by for now with what, what we've got. I mean, we just pop the door open during court service. Yeah. And people can get in and out, and then we make sure the clock is under the bed. Yeah. I mean, we don't we want a jury trial until in February, so we've got a little bit of leeway there. So, okay. Yeah. And that was what I was afraid of is getting into February yeah. before we can get done. That could be a problem. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I would, I would guess it'll be closer towards the end of the month. And a lot like these just saying there's a lot that can happen between now and then with this stuff. So, but um, at least you've seen what the estimate is and what it's looking like it's going to cost the county in order to have that system either at this point just upgraded mm -hmm. to something new. Um, and there will be some construction involved with really it because they have to re enlarge the area where the controller box currently is at to fit the new controller, which is a larger unit. And there'll be um, up to seven additional slots available for locks from what I read in that estimate, um, over and above what we've currently got in use up there. So um, it may be a case where we can add those in other locations, but we need to find out what the cost would be and whether or not that would be beneficial to do, to do that. And then I think that we also need to remember too that there is an annual subscription to the software that's on the system that we had not been paying over the last 10 years. So whenever anybody would come out to do something as far as, as uh, um, resetting the system or upgrading the software that's in it, uh, those types of things, we would have to pay for that for them to do it. And um, the, the it's like 
close to five hundred dollars a year. So, um, well, if we're going to be looking at this, the whole courthouse, mm -hmm. would it make sense to see a whatever system, like look at what system we might use, and then if we have to spend money on that, maybe go ahead and put it in up there. I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Those are some of the questions we need to talk about, and I need to show the plans that I have for what we're planning for the north door and the south door uh, out here because we would like to build a small atrium out in front of the building so that there's two doors and, and we don't have as much heat loss because of going out a door directly to the outside, um, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and how that would work as far as bringing prisoners and stuff here to get them to court and whether that would be an inconvenience or if it would be all right. Um, the design that we have is a very see-through type design so it kind of blends in and it doesn't disrupt with the way the front of the building flows right now and uh, we want to make sure that uh, it's acceptable at least to the general public because this is a historical building that belongs to the people. And we wanna make sure that they're comfortable with doing something like that because it would be a major change, but it is a true security upgrade for the building itself since we only have two doors that you can come in and out here at the courthouse. So, all right. Thank well, you. thank you, Jenny. I appreciate you coming in, and I yeah. wanted to get you to the front so you could get back to right. the important business that. that you do. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, I see that we have Scott Klein on with us, so we will meet with our county engineer. Scott. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Great. This is the first time I've used this um, microphone and camera. So, it sounds um, good. We can see a fine. So from December 7th through December 18th, they did uh, blading of gravel roads and dirt roads. Um, used the brush cutter, or did brush cutting with the boom mower in uh, districts two and one. And they also used um, a mulcher, the Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it mounts on the on the wheeled excavator, the fecon mulcher, and uh, they use it doesn't have a wet blade, so it doesn't have any uh, um, oh herb, herbicides involved. So um, they've been using both sets of equipment, and then. Um, We've done some ditching on pine and some uh, replacements uh, and repairs of culverts on on Pine Avenue, the dirt part just off of Glasgow. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at two different sheets here. So equipment maintenance. Uh, so they've did some cleanup on and painting of uh, the concrete trailer, the trailer that has the concrete sawing and and uh, concrete. When they repair concrete, they, they have a trailer that that they use for that. And then uh, the rubber tired roller, they did some cleanup on that. They did, they've been, or they were mowing earlier on pavements. It doesn't look like they've done any of that this past week. Um, I did rock hauling on mint by the country club and different spots all over the county and on umber north of Salina Road. Did uh, snow plowing on December 12th in the morning. And um, yeah, I think that's I think that's all the items that I had from Billy. Okay. You have any questions, Dee? Yeah. 
Um, I've contacted the person parties that uh, had the complaint about Umber and they understand what's going on out there. So, um, and that's just north of Salina Road where the uh, confinement is at and the mess that was on the roadway and their concern with it. So uh, they understand the position that the county's in with uh, that situation and uh, that it's being rectified. So I haven't heard anything back. So I'm assuming they're satisfied in the answer that they were given. So thank you for sending Billy and, and maybe you out there to look at that to see what was going on. Okay, Scott? Okay. All right. Um, anything else? Not, not, so, or not for me. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Scott, for meeting with us this morning. Uh, we'll move on to uh, discuss and consider 2080 agreement for the for Iowa Precinct Atlas uh, Consortium. Um, I have not had an opportunity to read over this. This was just presented in the packet this morning. Um, it says this agreement is made and entered into by and between and among the undersigned counties and having adopted this agreement by resolution of its board of supervisors and hereby joined together to form a public body corporate politic, politic and separate legal entity under the Iowa Code Chapter 28E and amendments there too. And then um, the purpose of this is the parties enter into this 28E agreement to provide an organizational structure to purchase a copyright license for distribution and use within Iowa in order to facilitate the members use of the computer software program known as Precinct Atlas and Absentee Atlas also known as Absentee Precinct Atlas or Satellite Atlas, <clears throat> as well as related software and hardware components herein collectively referred to as Precinct Atlas. Each member county shall be obligated under such copyright license entered into by IPAC. In addition, IPAC shall engage in any other related activity which an Iowa 28 e organization may lawfully be engaged. IPAC shall comply with all provisions of Iowa Code Chapter 28E, including subject, subjecting itself to open meeting and public record requirements with, with the notice and publication requirements set forth in Iowa Code. This agreement looks to me like it belongs to the auditor and the voting procedures and the software that's used along with it. So um, I would entertain a motion to uh, renew the uh, 28E agreement and affix our signatures to it today. Yeah, sure. Is an update. Patty, can you answer that for us? Is this an update to any software that we're currently using? She's still on mute, so I don't know whether I'll I'll go ask her. You can do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. So this is do you sell precinct atlas um two years ago? Okay. And we no longer supporting that. Okay. Oh. It's kind of gone away from it. So we have to have a full book program, so we're going back to precinct atlas. Okay. How many other counties are involved with this? It's a lot of counties. It's a lot. Um, I don't okay. know that I can answer that. Um, I know that there are at least two other companies doing the same the thing. Same type of thing. Um, and then our vendor who has our machine 
type of program, but they use more like a, an iPad type of thing, a tablet. Right. And you just want all your time on your laptop. So, right. and we think that would be fine. It's just and so we know that this will be compatible with the equipment we've got. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good explanation. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you want to pull the door closed, please? Yeah. Thank you. Make a motion to approve. Um, okay, I have a motion from Sanquist, a second from Hamilton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. So we'll fix our signatures to that after okay. we're done with the meeting here. Um, discuss and consider resolution authorizing the chair to sign the 2080 agreement for Atlas Consortium. I would you make the motion? I'll make a motion to authorize the chair to Okay, and I will second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. I as the chair will sign that after this meeting. Uh, discuss and consider tuck pointing contract. Um, we received the uh, final payment amount, plus we received a um, a change work change order. The change order concerned um, putting the uh, putting the new rings around the clock face. There were um, anchors that weren't adequate for the new new pieces of equipment. They found out that after they got the new one, the new rings out here. Um, they, they are a uh, metal ring instead of a wooden ring that used to be around them that would need to be repainted or whatever. These are powder coated with a white finish so that uh, they'll withstand the weather and time uh, up there. And that bill was uh, $1,600. So I would like to have the board approve the work order change uh, to add that to the project. Um, I would need a motion. The, the, this is this is the only work change other than the very first one where we added the work okay. over at the uh, county attorney's office. Okay. Okay, I have a motion from Sandquist, a second from Hamilton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The uh, final bill to the contractor e &H restoration came in at just slightly over $104,000, which is um, minus a 3% uh, retainage so that they will come back in the spring to finish up cutting the joints and the window wells around the building and making those match with the stone that's around in the front. Um, the window wells, the limestone had eaten back in so far that it created uh, cavities in there. They filled in the cavities and got those all in place, but they need to have a strike line for the mortar to come around the corner so that it looks as if it is still the stone that's there, that it wasn't repaired. Um, and, and they will need to come back and do that in the spring. That's pretty much the only item that's left to be completed here on the courthouse with the tech pointing. So I would recommend that the board approve the um, final pay now minus the retainage okay. uh, for the work that will be done in the spring. I'll make the motion to approve the final payment minus the retainage. Okay, I have a motion from Sanquist, a second from Hamilton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, probably you should see at least a lifespan of 50 years okay. out of what we've done, but that doesn't mean the areas that we didn't do won't fault between now and then, but we have done all of the joints around all of the sand, the sandstone on the bottom of the building. So those should be good for the time coming up 
and then um, they should should be fine uh, from here for the next 50 years. Now the bricks above, we did uh, about 22% of the joints uh, in that area above. So you have some that are brand new now, some that are varying ages throughout the years, and some that have been at least 50 years before they've been touched. Okay. So we will have uh, that, uh, that hanging on. Um, Dave, I noticed you came in. We'll, I'll talk to you in just a moment. Um, so so we, we are pretty well solid here on the courthouse now for some time to come. Yeah. We, won't, we won't be looking at having to do more work within the next five years at least. Yeah. So um, we've, we've made the motion we've passed going on with uh, making the payment except for the retainage fee to the contractor. So Dave, um, we had talked with Jennifer. She was in here early. I moved her up so that she could be mind, we could be mindful of her time and, and everything. Uh, there will be a uh, committee meeting of the building safety committee, which includes the judges, uh, the sheriff, uh, myself as the committee chair for the building. Um, I'd like you to be there. It'll be on Tuesday, January 5th. And uh, we will discuss further as far as whether we're going to uh, use convergent technologies as the uh, contractor to put in new equipment, or if we will look at other new equipment that may be different from what we have right now, but be compatible with what we're looking at for our future projects <clears throat> for the north and south entrances. So um, I'll get with you as far as what time that meeting is and make sure that you're available to be there with me. Right, right, and I'm leaving on the 7th, so um, we'll both be able to be here for that meeting at that time. Um, yeah, I yeah. am. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Right, that's part of our general maintenance that we do ongoing. We were talking about the uh, tuck pointing contract and then coming back in the spring to do the window wells to finish that out for us. Then we'll be 100% done. The uh, E&H restoration has put in their final uh, pay amount, which was just slightly over $104,000 that was remaining to pay on the contract. Mm -hmm. And that we're retaining some of that money uh, there's a, a retention of about 3% that's going to happen so that we ensure that E&H will come back and do the window wells next spring. I don't have any doubt in my mind that they would, but this is standard practice that if some work isn't completed, we hold a little bit of percentage for retainage on the overall cost of the project. And um, I will have the final numbers on what the total cost of the project was. Uh, coming up at one of our meetings in January so that uh, we know where we were at. We were under budget for the entire project. We had uh, appropriated uh, just short of $400,000 and we still have quite a little bit between where the final project was at about uh, $330,000 and our just under $400,000 mark. Uh, for the money that we we were available to spend on the building. So um, we've got some other things that we've been talking about as well, and we may uh, use a little bit of that money for an upcoming project on the north door particularly, because that's the, the one project that I think Dee and I want to try to move forward with this next year, as well as putting in the uh, mini splits for the heating and cooling. And so we'll have to find some money in the budget to to augment that total. But uh, I think that that's uh, something that we need to get done uh, coming up for now and in the future. And, uh, and just for everybody that's on Zoom, in addition to the entrances on the horizon, whenever we find money in the future, are updating the restrooms, which greatly need it. Yes, yes. Um, they'll be upgraded for... Um, true ADA hand, handicap use uh, here 
currently we're kind of right on the envelope of what's true and what's what's not. So we have plans for um, a restroom upgrade. We have plans for a north and south entryway upgrade. We have plans for the mini splits that we were just talking about, all prepared with estimates by the uh, architect, uh, Horizon Architecture, who has been doing uh, the tuck pointing work, specifications, plans, and uh, uh, coordination and inspection of the project. So we will get those same types of services from them as well. We can we can talk about it further and uh, we can do that as either agenda item or we can do that as far as general maintenance is concerned as you are our employee here at the courthouse so all right thank you dave, dave. okay so we're all done yes we yeah, are. appreciate your help well thank you for keeping the story <laughs> yeah yeah well <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to discuss and consider reappointment of Joni Henshaw to the Board of Health. I'll make a motion to reappoint Joni Henshaw to the Board of Health. And thank you for being willing to serve, Joni. Yes, thank you very much. I hope you get a chance to watch this at some time, Joni. <laughs> thank you, Chris, uh, you can Chris the message. for doing that for us and making those contacts. Um, so I have a motion to approve Joni Henshaw as a reappointment to the Board of Health uh, from Sandquist, uh, second from Hamilton. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, discuss and consider reappointment of Christy Nystrom to the uh, Board of Health. I'll make a motion to reappoint Christy and thank you to Christy for being willing to serve. Yes, thank you very much, Christy. I will second that motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, discuss and consider weed commissioner change. Um, we've had some discussion about this, about the uh, duties of what's going on uh, with it. There has been a change of uh, law uh, or at least policy from the DOT that any uh, secondary road funds will be used only between right-of-way. Uh, I've spoken with Dan uh, about what it takes to be the weed commissioner uh, here in the county. Um, Supervisor Dimmitt had been speaking with Russ, who is the company that does our, uh, our nuisance property abatements that we've been ongoing with and uh, we have a proposal for them to be able to take over and do this for a cost of approximately $3,500. Uh, that way it wouldn't go to the secondary road department and would ally any concerns that our engineer has about whether or not they're actually doing any work off of the right of way. Uh, the county is still responsible for any weeds that may be wild in the ditches in our right-of-ways around the county. So they will still need to deal with that on their own basis. But uh, Russ, the, the group Russ, um, has the capability and does do this kind of work in several other counties. And so it seems to me that it would be a good move once we get uh, a uh, um, final contract to be able to bring back to the board and uh, 
work that out. So yeah, Chris, when's your board meet again? Chris Estel, when does your board meet again? It would be um, January 21st, and I see that Dan's on too, so January 21st. So are you mm -hmm. wanting us to wait until after that board meets to act on this, or what's your thoughts? No preference? Well, well, Dan can answer that, but I mean, when Dan's functioning in the role of the weed commissioner, he's not, he's functioning okay. under the Board of Supervisors versus the Board of Health, so um, that's that decision would rest with you guys. It was discussed, Dan. I don't know if, what you want to say about that at our last meeting, but. Yeah, well, basically, um, the board said that they were going to wait to see what the uh, Board of Supervisors had to say. So it sounds okay. like um, you kind of moved in the direction of Russ, uh, which is fine. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and basically it's totally up to the board of supervisors because the lead commissioner is under the board of supervisors right currently the uh, budget item line item that we have for weed commissioner is three thousand dollars and so um if russ's final um agreement is in the thirty five hundred dollar range we will be able to try to work something out with our budget for this next coming fiscal year and then that weed commissioner um, position would actually be with them. And again, weed, weed attention is done either by um, seeing something visibly from the road when you drive by as a commissioner, or if a complaint is uh, registered with the office of weed commissioner, then there will be something, some action taken uh, as far as going out and looking at the nuisance, whether it is a real nuisance, what, what type of remedy needs to be taken to get rid of the nuisance, whether that's spray or mow, uh, that type of work. And that's always been traditionally done by a contractor that uh, Dan has been getting to do those types of things because the weed commissioner themselves doesn't go out and spray and uh, do any of the cutting, even though they have to have a uh, state of Iowa uh, applicators license in order to do those types of things. So is that kind of a synopsis of what you're talking about, Dan? Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, it, I, I haven't hired a third party, but private owners have hired third party uh, people to come in and do the work. So, right. Uh, so and that would only be the case is to an owner that would ignore any notices or uh, any any attempt to try to mitigate the problem with without doing anything with it. Uh, if if I'm not being clear, I'm certain. Right. The, the, the owner, uh, once they're notified, they have a certain amount of time and then we bring in the county attorney, they write a letter, and then they have a certain amount of time to respond to that. And then after that, if they don't do what they're supposed to do, then um, <clears throat> the county, the weed commissioner can uh, hire a third party to go in and do the work and then that is placed on the owner's tax tax bill. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. We're going to be moving forward with this and we'll have some final answers coming in January. Okay. That's fine. And like I said in my last email to the board that I'm willing to cover until March when you do have to have a new um, week commissioner um, take over by March. Correct. So I'm willing to, to do that. Okay, well, thank you very much for attending the meeting with us and answering some of the questions. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that and we'll move forward then um, to uh, make committee reports. I, I have a couple of committees that met, um, the Southern Iowa Crime Commission, as well as uh, the Southern Iowa Detention Services. Uh, the detention services meet once quarterly, four times a year. The Crime Commission meets twice a year. Uh, both of these committees involve what's going on with um, our 
our detention services and uh, monies for training for our sheriffs and deputies, uh, law enforcement in general, uh, with, with changes in the law that uh, they have to deal with coming up. So, uh, and, and budgets worked out for those. We went ahead and approved budgets for both for the next coming fiscal year. Um, and we are just members of those groups. We do send um, juveniles to the detention center down in Fort Madison, which is a primary fo function of uh, one of the committees, the uh, detention services committee. Um, the building down in Fort Madison is located next to the Lee County Sheriff's Office in Lee County Jail. Um, they are going to have some retirements coming up soon um, in the near future. And so uh, we, we will be looking for new personnel for those jobs, but uh, it's well in hand. Harry Folkerts uh, is the executive director of those groups and uh, she's, she's well underway on trying to get that taken care of. Uh, because again, some of these employees have been in place for more than 20 to 25 years. And uh, they, it's hard to replace something like that, especially someone that uh, does building maintenance as well as doing their job as a supervisor of all the employees down there at the center. And um, it, it will be tough to find someone that can have that combination of skills uh, to come up into the future with because anytime maintenance, maintenance work is done, that's an expense to the budget that needs to be appropriated for in order to do that. Um, so, and then I also met with the uh, SIDCA board, uh, which is a waterway uh, protection group. They try to get funding from the state of Iowa appropriated from the legislature each session in order to do either uh, ponds or stream cleanups uh, or general waterway improvements uh, around bridges and through culverts, that type of work. Uh, they have not received any funding for the last two legislative cycles. They're hoping to get some funding this year, but currently uh, the total amount of money available for those types of projects is just a little under uh, a little under $6,000 that's available and, and the funds are evaporating quickly. So uh, we're not sure at this point whether that is going to continue on into the future. We do have another meeting coming up in March, uh, which is towards the end of the legislative session. And we should know by that time as, as to whether we will have uh, money appropriated so that the group can continue to move forward. Um, so, and this is based off of a lot of uh, established uh, drainage districts and um, uh, I the term for it, uh, water areas that are identified. And we only have one of those here in our county, and it only covers a portion of our county uh, along the Skunk River area up in the northeast quadrant of our county along the north eastern edge. So we haven't over the years participated in getting funds back from that group, but there are funds when there is money available uh, to be able to do some pond projects and that so that we can control drainage on a private level uh, on different farms around through the county. Uh, I know that Stan Simmons, who worked for the soil conservation up in uh, Washington, for many, many years. Uh, his brother, Dick Simmons, who's a former supervisor here in the county, uh, was in asking about whether there was funding available to do a project that he knows is going to be done here in Jefferson County. And uh, if we could look at some funding that way, but unfortunately, again, we only have just a little bit under $6,000 and that isn't gonna take, take care of uh, doing a project like that, so. Mm -hmm. I believe Stan had said that he was going to look there as well. So, um, but he had made contact with the county engineer with this 
initially, and then Scott brought it to me because he knew I was on this committee for mm -hmm. SIGCA. So yeah, I check with their idols and see what they've got for funding. Did Stan mention anything about that, Scott, about talking to idols about uh, that pond that he had brought to you or questions about a pond? Well, he just uh, wanted to know if we were going to do what we've done in the past, which is uh, go through Sidka. But I said, I really don't think there's anywhere near enough funds that for um, available through Sidka. And I wondered if maybe through soil conservation or other other um, sources that funding could be come up with. And if the property owner had contacted anybody, I don't think he had. So. Um, yeah, I'm sure they'll, they will know who to contact or you will. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. All right, thank um, you. Um, yeah, I've had, I think it's been a while since we recorded. I'm just going to talk about early childhood Iowa. Again, Tammy bought um, cleaning supplies and paper products for child care providers throughout the three county area, and that's much appreciated by those providers um, that do child care. And then also mental health next Monday. Our governance board is sponsoring a Zoom session with the incoming legislators in our eight county region. So we've invited anybody that covers that so that we can educate them about the challenges of their children's mental health and the adult mental health world related to funding complex service needs. Um, and we're going to keep it to an hour. We wanted to be respectful of it, their time and not have it turn into a gripe session, but kind of approach it. This is what works. This is what does not work. And of course, they're all well aware they need funding. But um, we've invited literally all the legislators in the area. And most of them are going to be able to attend. One might be on vacation, but still, it's going to be on Zoom. So mm -hmm. it'll be good. Okay. Um, anything else for committee reports? Yeah, a lot of internal stuff, but nothing finalized or ready yet. Okay, we'll move on to uh, public comments. Uh, I see that we have John Congdon on with us this morning. Is there anything that you would like to bring to our meeting, sir? Uh, yes, there is. I was wanting to uh, <clears throat> ask a few questions about um, the proposed AT&T tower that is going to be just out of the city. And I apologize for, <clears throat> um, I've just learned a few things recently. Um, so I appreciate being able to speak with you about it. Uh, and I was wanting to get a little bit of um, an idea of the what the board's position might be. Um, <clears throat> there's, um, you know, there's certain health concerns that are associated uh, with uh, a tower going in. And since it's just right across the street from the city, and I've talked with Connie Boyer, and she's mentioned that the city had been planning actually to do some rezoning project or do something there to make the, to um, make that area more usable to the city uh, for lower perhaps for lower income housing um, and sub, uh, making smaller lots and things like that. So there's a concern about the impact of the tower. Um, I mean, for one thing, having a big tower across the street uh, is not a very good um, um, advertisement for people moving into an area. <clears throat> and um, so one of the things that I was had wanted to approach is the county has a nuisance law that applies to properties that have, um, you know, that have something to do that with health, you know, that an object that's on a property that may be unhealth, uh, unhealthy. Yeah, uh, John, I can speak to that a little bit. 
um, and Pat's on, so help me out because I don't have my notes in front of me. Okay. I sent Einer an email that detailed it, but basically our present nuisance ordinance does not address a tower. It clearly states exactly what it does address. Uh huh. So that's, yeah, that uh, was one of my questions. If I mean, at the you know before going into the different examples, it says to wit. And I was wondering if you're familiar with what the actual legal definition of is of to wit. Um, if that is a excluding, uh, if it means you know that only what is mentioned is included, or um, because include is actually a uh, excluding. I mean, it's. Uh, if, if something is not mentioned, then everything else is excluded. And um, so I didn't know what the actual legal definition of to wit would be. Um, well, we have both uh, Mike Brown and Pat McVan on with us this morning. They're representatives of our county attorney's office. Um, would uh, either one of you two like to address that? Pat, Mike, there's Pat. Uh, so um, the language mirrors the language that's in the state uh, statute. So um, I don't know that there's a lot of interpretation for us at the local level. Um, it, uh, it has always been uh, uh, used uh, for the specific examples uh, listed in our ordinance and uh, has not been expanded beyond that. In fact, uh, the enforcement as the board, you guys know, has been uh, difficult to um, figure out uh, um, a ways to do that in an equitable manner. And uh, so expansion um, into areas that um, are not specifically listed um, is, um, uh, I think could be costly for the board uh, in terms of how to uh, fairly determine and regulate that as well as it would frankly require research on our end to determine what other uh, areas have been determined to be nuisance under those uh, under those laws uh, by the courts of the state. But it's um, we we we've done it very narrowly. We have not included all of the uh, subsections that are specifically stated by the state statute. Um, and uh, I, that's been done for a reason uh, because of the difficulty of enforcement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was that basically answers my question on that. Um, so, yeah, we um, have researched it, John. Um, as you know, it's a very difficult situation. And I've, I've read through the ordinance that the uh, city is going to be proposing at some time in the future mm -hmm. here. I'm not sure at what date they're going to take that up. Uh, Pat, do you want me to forward that on to you or did you receive a copy of that at any point in time? I, I have not seen that. Um, you know, you can forward that to me if, if you think that uh, that's necessary. I'd be happy to look at it. Well, I'd, I'd like you to at least uh, read through it and, and uh, give your comment to us at some point in time uh, what you what you see in it and uh, how it would work um, if it was to be or have some sections maybe apply to uh, the county um, but uh, again all I've done is I've read through it I know pretty much what's in it but I'd like to get an opinion from our attorneys on it before the board takes any type of action. You know, the other thing about the, uh, the nuisance ordinance and the state statute is that uh, the state statute makes clear that it creates a civil cause of action um, uh, for violations stated in the state law. So it is not, uh, you know, speeding, for example, uh, is something that um, only the state or the municipalities can enforce. But nuisance, um, if uh, folks uh, you know feel strongly about, 
uh, and it falls outside of uh, either our ordinance or our enforcement capabilities is something that can be pursued by private individuals. Uh, so um, while the request to the county is certainly reasonable and understandable, um, it is not, it's not an all or nothing deal by the folks who are concerned or interested. Um, they have their own, uh, they have their ability to act on their own without any municipality or um, governmental involvement. So, um, you know, if uh, there are those who disagree with the um, determination of, of how broadly it, the ordinance can be used or how broadly the state statute should be interpreted um, or applied, um, uh, they have a remedy there uh, onto themselves outside of the board. So. Um, it's not a situation where if we don't act, it's impossible for someone to act. Um, and so we need to keep that in mind too. Um, yeah. Where is that time? I mean, there's other statutes actually. Um, uh, you know, I think what might be a stronger statute actually would be assault. Um, because part of the definition of a legal definition of assault is unwanted touching or threat. To touch. And that's that's talked about a little bit in that ordinance, yeah. Uh, and that's that's one of the things I have questions with, and how that would actually uh, work within within the eyes of the law. And that's why I would like to have Pat read that and look it over. Yeah. So. Well, it would also require becoming very familiar with, um, I think, the scientific research that has been done um, on you know, radio frequency, electromagnetic fields. Yeah, um, we've received a lot of emails and have been reading them, John. Yes. So. Yeah, so, and I would, you know, I've mentioned, I've talked with both of you about um, perhaps participating in a committee that is going to examine that. It kind of got put on hold <laughs> for a couple of different parts, mainly because of the COVID. Mm -hmm. I think everything kind of focused into that. Um, but I would still, you know, would like to get that going. And um, so as far as the city goes, Doug Flournoy, um, the, that uh, proposed ordinance was submitted to the Environmental Committee, which is Doug Flournoy. And I talked mm -hmm. with him last week and he promised he was going to get to it over Christmas vacation. So, um, so there's a little bit of progress on that, but, um, it's kind of looking. The other thing is, is, is that um, from the announcement, and I just got that a couple of days ago, actually, uh, that AT&T made, and they have contractors that they have basically handling all of that stuff, so it doesn't go directly to them. But the to oppose that, then we would need to um, file a request for an environmental review to the FCC. Correct. And that was a notice that uh, Mayor Boyer is, has pointed out. And there was a news clipping that went along with that. It was published. Right. In, uh, well, it was a public announcement, yes. So yeah. uh, that is always available to citizens right at this point in time to ask for that environmental study uh, uh -huh. to be done. So. Now, as one one question would be if the would the county be open to joining a request for environmental review? We'd have to put that on our agenda and discuss it. Yes, we would have to place that on the agenda and discuss it at a formal meeting, and we can't right. do that right now in the public comment section of this particular agenda. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. I mean, we're running out of time. So. <laughs> I know, I know. And our next meeting won't be until after the first of the year on right. uh, January 4th. Right. So. But once I noticed once something is submitted, then that puts like a 14 day period, um, 14 day period of reply also. So mm -hmm. there's a couple back and forth that can take place. Okay, so I wanted just to find out some more details about, you know, what the county position is. And then also, um, you know, I would like to make a, uh, you know, some steps forward on getting that, uh, you know, like a citizens committee together to uh, 
you know, investigate the problem and see what they might be able to recommend. And I would like to have some legal participation. Uh, I don't know if one of the county legal councils would be able to participate in that. And also medical participation, um, which I don't know. Connie was thinking to ask uh, Chris to be, if she would participate in that also. And well, that would be the Board of Health and the... Uh, President of the Board of Health currently is Steve Bergmeier. Okay. So you would have to bring that to his attention as well. Okay, good. Where is that tower? Um, uh, in, go ahead, Jim. Uh, okay, it, it's at the end of South 17th Street. Um, it's basically right across the street uh, from the city boundary, city county boundary. So the tower will be in the county, but it's, um, you know, within a lot from the, you know, the other uh, that would be impacting city um, zoning and property or city jurisdiction. So one of the things I was wanting to do possibly, and I guess I can just go through the uh, auditor's office to find out who owns that property. That would be the assessor's office. Oh, the assessor's office. Okay, thank you. So, all right, um, let's let's move on then. Um, okay. Well, thank you for the time. Thank you, John. Yes, thank you, John. Um, we'll move on then to um, allow claims and approve reports. I have a motion from Sandquist, a second from Hamilton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, we're going to discuss and consider nuisance properties. Um, Lee Dimmitt has always taken care of this in the past, and I'm going to uh, start doing this from here and into the future. Uh, we have two properties that were recently cleaned up, um, taken care of in Abingdon and Lindby. We have another property that's uh, coming up on that uh, for cleanup, so it'll be up to uh, the Board of Supervisors to uh, figure out how to pay for the contractor at this particular time and then uh, have that money assessed back to the property owner. Um, currently, the way we would do that is on their taxes, but how that's assessed and how that's collected through assessment is kind of up in the air right now uh, because these total amounts are rather big. One is just a little over $12,000 and the other one was a little over $13,000 after the scrap metal that was taken from the properties was sold and that money was applied towards what the total cleanup bill was. So we're, we're still moving in that direction um, and we are pretty happy right now with the way that the things, properties look after they've been cleaned up. Uh, we didn't have any real problems with anybody um, with what was going on. And so. that's something we're working on as we work on our budget is how many of these can we afford the budget for next year? Yeah. So stay tuned, there'll be more on that. Um, yeah, before we do committee assignments, let's take a short break. Okay. All right, we're going to take a short break right now, but we're gonna move into uh, assigning new committees coming up. Uh, for this coming year, since we have a new supervisor that we swore in this morning, Susie Drish, who will be taking the office that uh, Steve Bergmeier, or excuse me, uh, Lee Dimmitt has held for the last 12 years. Uh, I apologize for that name slip. That's, uh, that was entirely on me. So um, we will be moving into that here just shortly. So.
Hi. We're we're still in our meeting. We're still live on Zoom. So I'll talk to you in just a few minutes. Thank you, Ray. That we just maybe discuss this, right? Finalize it when Susie's here. We thought she might be here, right? I, Which is why we put it on the agenda because I know from years past, especially with Lee, uh, not continuing next year, it's helpful to know for, for January so we can let the committees know so nobody misses a meeting because um, they weren't. In, emailed the information I know when I started and we didn't assign committees until after the fact it took me three weeks to get on a computer and then people didn't know what my email was and it was just kind of a long process till you could really get involved with your committee so we were trying to get that jump started a little with Lee um, I'm not continuing so anything we talk about now is going to be tentative and we can finalize it on January 4th. Okay, so uh, we start at the top of the list, the 8th Judicial Correctional Services Board. Uh, currently, I'm the uh, uh, member on that board, and I would like to continue to stay as, as that. Uh, Demet was the uh, first alternate, Sandquist was the second alternate, so we'll talk about who would take which position on that if I am unable to attend one of those meetings. Uh, the 1015 transit system. Yeah, that's one that I'm thinking either Susie or me. I know it kind of, let's see. I talked to Lee about some of these committees. Those with Area 15 Regional Planning, and I would really like to do that because I like the whole economic development thing. Mm -hmm. So I want to put a question marker around that one and we can come back to that one on the fourth. <clears throat> um, I know you've expressed also the ambulance service agency, which is the next one on the list. Lee was the chairman of that or the member of yeah. ours for that. They meet the third Wednesday at uh, 1 30 p.m. Um, at the hospital, I believe. Yeah. Um, and you had, had expressed interest in wanting to do that. Right. So, so um, um, yeah. And then Area 15 RPA, it looks like they don't meet very much because um, it says fourth Thursday if there is business. Mm -hmm. And so that was the one, yeah. Yeah. We'll um, and then, sure. then the uh, Area 15 Regional Planning meets on the fourth Tuesday at 530. Yeah, that's the one I want to do. So um, that's basically economic development, and I do the FIDA here, so it would coincide with the regional one. The uh, Ready Board, R-E-D-I Board, for area 15 that was also attended by uh, 
damn it, we don't have a first or second alternate for that. And right. it looks as if that's a meeting on an as needed basis because there's no specific time set for that. So we'll find out more on what that one is. Mm -hmm. um, we're all on the assessor's conference board. Yes. Chamber of Commerce, typically I do that, and I would like to continue all the, on that. I can tell you that's changed a lot with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, used to be we attend more of the meetings now. It's pretty much an update from the ad hoc members, which we are, but it's, it's helpful to learn what goes on in the community. Um, uh, the next two are the courthouse and annex committee and the courthouse security committee. I've been working on both of those and worked through the projects here at the courthouse with it um, and oversee a lot of stuff with uh, our employee, Dave Taft. I'd like to continue on with both of those. The uh, courthouse security committee has not met in the time that I've been on the board, but we will be meeting uh, in January. We were talking about that. Uh, when um, Jennifer Runyon was in here from the clerk of court's office uh, and mm -hmm. talking about what the uh, security system locks are up there and what's going on, I kind of want to continue on with that. Um, so DCAT, um, we were thinking as Susie maybe would like to do that, so we will ask her because mm -hmm. um, we know she is, has interest in that area. And E91 um, enhanced. Um, that was the. I would like to move to that if at all possible because there are some uh, major discussions going on right now as far as what's going to happen with dispatching uh, here in the county. And uh, yeah, I'm the first alternate for it right now, and I've been in attendance in several of those meetings. So it's my understanding that is the the board with all the fire chiefs of the area and, and whatever. Right. Fire chiefs, mayors of all the communities that are served by the 911 service that we have here in the county. And so, so emergency management commission, I'd like to do that. Um, that's more the. And Brett, you're on. You can help define it if you need, if <laughs> we don't do it justice, the emergency basis. Um, when things happen, um, and obviously, yeah, go ahead. So two different boards, Emergency Management Commission. Uh, emergency Management is uh, elected officials from all the cities um, in our county and a board of supervisor and our sheriff. Um, emergency Management obviously deals with disasters, uh, planning, exercising for the community to make sure we're prepared for that. Um, 911 board is everything has to do with our uh, 911 systems here, including radios, um, purchasing equipment for for our, our law center, dispatch center, um, radio consoles, E911 systems, and stuff like that. And actually, it's not E911 anymore. They took the enhanced off. It's just right. Okay, good to know. So, just what do we call it? 911. Okay, so then we'll, uh, we skipped over uh, early childhood board. Is okay. that you wanted? Yeah, early childhood. I was thinking that might be one for Susie. Oh, um, okay. Just because I think she might enjoy that too. Um, and we're going to need to figure out if I do a couple of leaves, I'm going to have to probably give up some so she'll have some. Yeah. And again, we'll, we will get her input before we finalize any of this. So right now we're just planning. Um, Arts and Convention Center, uh, uh, CBB, yeah, I'd like to continue on that one. And again, that's one that's changed with COVID. Um, we use it then on Zoom and uh, it's usually um, a little different. So we'll look forward to after COVID days to get back and Peter, I want to continue on that one. Okay, and then the HAZMAT 10 County CERB board. Um, um, I'm happy to work on that one because that may go with the emergency management. Okay. I've had some of that kind of stuff in my hospital days. 
Um, Pippa. Pippa, I was wondering again, let's ask Susie about that. Um, I can continue. I know it always needs, honestly, it's something we should all probably be involved in. Um, Pat, do you have any comments? If one of us, all of us on that one? And maybe I'm thinking maybe just one since a lot of that's HIPAA related. That would take more committee approach. I guess Pat doesn't have a comment on that. Okay. <laughs> so we'll put a question mark, probably either Susie or me on that one. Okay, juvenile court services, that uh, that goes along with what I was talking about earlier in my committee report. I think I want to stay on that. Okay, historic preservation, I am currently on that. I'm happy to continue, but again, let's see if we need to even things out. So let's put a question mark by that one. Okay, where did we? Oh, we it's right that. above juvenile okay. court. Sorry. And um, then local housing the trust, trust fund, fund. Uh, that one I think Susie may be right. uh, good for it. And again, we'll get her input. Right. Same on Madison Barnes. I started on that a couple of years ago. I can continue, or if that's one Susie's interested in, um, we'll ask her. Mental Health Advisory Board and um, the governance board, I'd like to continue on that. Um, tend to raise some questions in there okay. that they appreciate. <laughs> um, Pathfinders, I'd like to continue on that one. Okay. Uh, Progressive Housing Corporation. Um, that one is, is kind of up in the air because the board doesn't have a whole lot to do with that any longer. Um, Dick Reed was the uh, representative for us uh, on that board, but I know that he is uh, standing down on it. Um, and it is one that only meets once a year. So we'll have some more discussion between Susie and I and you uh, coming up on that one. Okay. Reed for Oliver's one. Yep. And Russ, I think that's one you probably need to get Susie's input on too. Yeah, I would I would like to do that one, but again, know, yeah, but if Susie. You, if you need to even it the out. reason the reason behind that is that's what the nuisance properties all fall under that as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll need we'll need further discussion. Uh, safety committee, usually Darren or I go to those early once in a while we go to, at the same time but not often right so. and we meet monthly on the on those the uh first wednesday of can, the month. can all of us participate on safety if we're not making any because usually what happens we're not making county con, uh, decisions we bring that back to the board of supervisors because i think it's helpful because um, to have us all there if we can attend, but typically Darren or I attend based on our schedules. So mm -hmm. we'd like your input on that one. Uh, I mean, it is a standing subcommittee of the board, so it still meets the open meetings requirements um, because it makes recommendations directly to the board. So I don't think there's anything that would prohibit attendance if the person who is not the primary member is you know, just sort of listening. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, you, otherwise you just put it on your agenda and make it a public meeting. Okay. Okay. So I am open if yeah, we want to get her input or do we want to? I think, I think we all three need to talk about it since that is a committee that's directly for us to bring recommendations to us. Uh, the Semco landfill, I think I'd like to see Susie take that. I'm currently the uh, chairman of that. They meet the third Wednesday of uh, each month. Um, recently, we have not been meeting all that often because um, the, the landfill is, is working very well right now. And the executive director that we have up there um, is, is very good at his job and has done really well in what he's doing. So, uh, I think I'm going to ask Susie if she would like to take that committee. 
Um, then we've got the uh, service agency, county, city building decisions. Um, I have been the chairman on that one. Um, that is the committee that gets together at the law center, needs some uh, repairs. We also have some changes that the city is proposing about moving the fire station from another location and we'll have to uh, reopen the 2080 agreement on how the building is used um, in the future uh, over there. I'm happy to, to do that. And if Susie has a strong feeling about that, then let you on, you know, let's get her input on that one. Okay. And again, that that's a committee that meets as needed. Uh, and um, who is it? Uh, um, Tammy uh, Jones mm -hmm. from the radio station is uh, the secretary of that board right now, and she's the one that sets out the uh, uh, invitations for meetings and, and when those are going to take place. So then we have uh, CEDA, which is was one that uh, Lee had. Uh, you are the uh, first alternate on that. Um, fourth Monday at 5.30 p.m. every other month. Um, and this is one I thought Susie might be interested in. I think she based would be. Based on her background. So we will ask her about that one. Um, the Crime Commission, I know. That, those Susie two committees, they're coming up here, the Crime South Southern Iowa Area Crime Commission and the Southern Iowa Area Detention Services Agency. Um, I've been on those and I would like to continue with that. Um, and I spoke about that earlier. Uh, then we have the South Iowa Development of Conservation Authority, that is the SIDCA board that I was talking about that uh, um, meets at various times, usually quarterly. Uh, but again, the the funding for that agency comes from the state of Iowa, so I think we're going to have to take a long look at uh, whether we're going to continue to be a member of that group or not, depending on whether any funding comes down from the state of Iowa uh, in order to uh, move it on into the future. So we can just kind of discuss that later. Um, the spec building, the 28E board, uh, for the building that was built out by the uh, DOT offices. Um, I'd kind of like to stay on that. I was on that committee when uh, it was initially formed and I was a city councilman at that time and, and transitioning over to the board here uh, from the council has been a, a good way for me to keep that knowledge that I had from there and uh, keep working with it from here forward. Um, Substance abuse awareness, that's you right now, D. Yeah, um, I would, I'd like to continue on that. That's one that Susie may be interested in, but right now let's pencil me in and we'll get her input. And then workforce development. I oh, think that's, that's, that's one I, Susie, that's I, one I think Susie would be. Yeah. There's been a lot of changes since she's been there. Um, but I think that would be one that I know. I'm pretty sure she would like right to and that one i believe meets is a, that one that one meets on an as needed basis uh, it? it's yeah it's changed it a lot. varies a lot we met a lot the first part of the year because every well from a year ago september to like march was pretty intense because the state of iowa is rechanging everything but now it's kind of settling down a little bit but we'll see okay so this is again a tentative on January 4th. We'll get Susie's input and finalize it. All right, so that uh, is at the end of the agenda today. We will meet, or the, the we won't meet, excuse me. Uh, the county offices are gonna be closed on Friday, December 25th for Christmas. And I know that we haven't got anything that we're planning for our agenda on the 28th coming up the first Monday after Christmas. So we may not meet again until January 4th as the board. So Merry Christmas, everybody. So, yes, Merry Christmas, everyone. Motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion to adjourn. Motion from Sanquist, second from Hamilton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you very much for joining us for this meeting today.